life is a like I said, an ACT funded contract. So as long as you've got an active ACT claim, um, you can talk to ACT and your case manager or sorry, recovery partner or yeah. <laughs> assisted recovery, it's all changed now, hasn't it? Um, and see if you would, you know, be suitable for the program. It's really uh, very driven by whatever your needs are, whatever your goals are. So it could be that your we do a lot of uh, employment searches for people that are wanting to get back into some part time or voluntary work. Um, lately, there's been a lot of uh, accommodation work that we've been doing alongside clients uh, to yeah find new places to live and also just maintain that um, tenancy or family situation or boarding situation, whatever that may be. So helping with budgets, making sure that the bills are paid on time, helping to support um, with cooking, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a very flexible contract, um, and I kind of think it's for anyone, um, whatever you know you, you need, we can help with. And how it works is you, you're assessed by one of our assessors, and then if it's appropriate and you're keen to get in, and get going, you're then matched with a support worker who works alongside you to be it budget, be it fitness, be it getting a driving license, employment, whatever it might be for you, they work alongside you. So it's really about promoting independence. We, I always say that the biggest um, outcome or the, the greatest outcome for our clients is that we exit out of your lives because you don't need us anymore. You become so independent that everything's all lined up and yeah, it may be that in the future, you know, people do drift back if things happen. Maybe, you know, their, their employment falls over or their accommodation, or they just need a bit of a boost. So we do have people float back, but yeah, the ultimate for us is that you're independent and don't need us. Yeah. So very goal, it's, it is very goal focused and, you know, like any sort of contract um, with ACC, it's, you know, we do have to provide reviews and things like that and see how you're going. Um, what else can I say? I mean, it's fun. I think we can make it, it because it is very much about you living your life and you living your best life, then it's um, exactly what, what you want to achieve for yourself. So there's a couple of different, um, and I'm pretty sure there's, that's on one of the pamphlets here. Um, there's four different uh, aspects to a contract. The major ones that we um, provide uh, are the tailored support, which is what I've explained to you, where you're face to face, sort of two or three times a week, whatever suits you, um, with a support worker, helping you achieve your goals. The other big one is uh, the facilitator pathway map which is a very cool piece of work uh, where you're looking at what um, what's my hopes and dreams, what, what is it that I want to achieve in the future. And we're talking not just next month, next year, we're talking the big picture stuff. So that's written alongside one of our clinicians or our assessors to really drill down and see what it is that you want from your life. And that can come in any form. We've done stuff around... Uh, people have wanted their own music put to their stuff and in a digital form, so they've got it like that. Other people have done a map for a piece of art that they can look at every day and go, wow, that's me, that's what I want to do, what's important to me. So it's all about what are my dreams and aspirations and what are some of the barriers for me to get there and how can we... So it's broken down into smaller steps, but it's actually looking at the bigger picture, and I think we could all do with something like that, <laughs> you know. Can I ask you a question? You said it's ACC related, so if somebody was in hospital at the moment with a, a brain bleed or something caused by an accident, they wouldn't be... No. Yeah. And if somebody had had a head injury, but they didn't want to get it met, a doctor measured by a doctor, they also won't get support. Well, that, unless they could go back to the doctor, and if it's two years ago and now that's caused a spiral of mental health episodes, 
Yeah, that's that, a tricky one. Yeah, that always gets me psychiatrist will say it's just a psychiatric condition rather than any yeah. um, rather yeah. than the fact that yeah. they're saying it's too much news but there's clear evidence there's straight well, well there's never an agency claim lodged for that no, you didn't go to a doctor I yeah. mean when, yeah. you, when you're um, pretty much living on the streets you get being a real yeah. show mm. just when you get to it yeah. and unfortunately yeah. that is where it falls it falls well, over when you haven't got all the all the powers that have been talking to each other. In reality, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. Uh, head injury happened a couple of days before he got kicked out of where he was living. So mm-hmm. head injury may have caused his behaviour, caused him to be kicked out of where he was living. Yeah. Then put him in the homeless shelter and then they go to the shady house. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. We can't go back to that now, so we're pretty much trying to pass this on to a social worker, but it's not going to help them run all right. The only thing that I can think of is getting to a sense of a GP that would look at it, like somebody who would actually delve deeper into the history like you've just given me. He's, he saw that we've already checked through his records, he was seen on the 5th of December, but it was happened on the 13th, I think that, mm. that's the problem. Mm. It's always even that there are some people, that's, that's what has happened. When we do see quite often, especially in my services like the residential services, the big tug of war is between who's going to fund. Is it a mental health problem or is it a brain injury problem? Or which one has happened first? And that's the... And if you've got a psychiatrist that's put their diagnosis Mm. here, a GP cannot question it Mm. because a GP will get his ass kicked. Mm. And that's already happening. Mm. So you've got this this fight. We can't get to anyone to actually review his health because we've got a, a schizophrenia diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So we've got even with private health insurance and trying to get referrals, we're just getting can't touch even it. with your private health insurance. Another psychiatry eval. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any decent psychiatrists in Hamilton or if they're all part of the same. I don't think we get like mm. I, I, I mean that could be something because yeah, like I'm saying, either to delve into the history rather than just take it from so that would be one option. So that is actually another mm. question to ask. Um, so we've got private health insurance. We just pay for a private. Yeah. Does it have to be someone from Hamilton? I mean, you could look at. You still got to get a referral out of the GP. Not if you pay for it privately. No, when you yeah. privately you don't. Privately. No, you still have to get a referral from specialists because I've got an agreement. Oh, because of the um, insurance, right? Yeah, I've got oh, an yeah. agreement. No, no, it's not just that. The like neurologists are going to wait three, four months, months to see end of December privately, and they won't see anyone if they haven't got a referral. So I've got an agreement with a neurologist that the GP will write a referral and people actually see it. But I've actually got to be seeing the neurologist myself. Mm-hmm. I want to show that I'm actually getting to the door. So I've got to get a diagnosis mm-hmm. before I can get anyone to actually open the box and look at things. Mm-hmm. And that's the piece we're looking at. Mm-hmm. I know there is a huge waiting list. Yeah, but it's, it's, not it's, not just, it's not just the waiting list if you're on public and Exactly. But even on private, it's months. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the older answer, I'm sorry. Just one of my question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Advocacy? Health and disability commission? Um, when I checked with Ken May last year, you had to wait six weeks if you were having a disagreement with the psychiatrist, which meant it was pointless. Mm-hmm. And the other point was, I was told if you ever do that, you are going to be blacklisted. For me, I think you're asking questions, blacklisted me, white, white, black, and the entire system that I've got. Tricky one. Mm. And unfortunately, you're not the only tricky one, I'm sure. You know? It's people falling through the gap. Mm. Yeah, sorry to just interrupt you. No, 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 no,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. It's just like, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, not. All I've seen of this, and Cedar will speak about her residential services for him, mm-hmm. but the community service that I manage is ACT yeah. 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 No, the social worker that we all give us some of the services from that, 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 that she's really Yeah. Which is yeah. 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 what a couple of places are up there still, which are really yeah. nice yeah. 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 I mean, a, a lot of people don't. And, and not your case, but maybe some of the ones that the social workers are dealing with. A lot of people don't think that, um, or have forgotten that they lodged a claim with ACC. Yeah, so if somebody had an original conviction on years ago, they could possibly still. They could possibly still, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can actually go back. I know, you, you can keep those. Yeah, 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 no problem. Yeah. So uh, my services, um, the, the service I look after is the residential service segments, 24 by 7 staff are there and they support people with um, day-to-day and living their life. Um, the, the difference is uh, those houses are belonged to Goodwood Park, so mostly people living in a flat, flatting situation, three or four people, but also we have got um, sites which has got only two, you know, two bedroom flats. Mm-hmm. So two people are um, living together, uh, but they share one kitchen. So it's like a household, how I will live in my own home, um, exactly in that philosophy we support the people. Um, our staff, so I have got services in all over Auckland, nothing in Hamilton. Um, so it's in South Auckland. The, the closest will be Ramarama that I have got. We have got a service there which is 20, on 20 acres of land and that service runs quite like a rural um, sort of a living situation. So we have got cows, we, have, we do gardening and you will see some of the photographs as I go. Uh, so people do like day to day, they work in the garden, they look after, they have, they might have their own veggie garden um, and one of our clients also has got some chickens uh, and they give eggs and then he puts it up at the gate and people take it and give some money. So there's no, like, you know, um, that this much it costs, whatever people get. But there are some of our neighbours, they will come and they will actually put a note that they're looking for more eggs if it is there. So it's like that. So that's a service in Yamayama and then West Auckland I have got in Kumu, Ranui, I've got a few um, bits of services. Now my service, the residential services, people are mostly funded through ACC and they are funded through um, individual contracts that means somebody even from Waikato can go into that service as long as Waikato DHB is happy to pay for it. So we do have um, some some of the clients that live in 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 my services. It's just that it's because maybe that's suitable that the, the service we are providing that suits um, that person or their family, and that's why we have. So we can take clients from anywhere in New Zealand. So I have got people from Bay of Plenty. I also got somebody from South Island because the service we provide. Um, and also our services, most of the people who live, they are quite, they don't have just uh, one diagnosis. They might have two, three diagnoses. Um, a bit complex people. Um, in regularly, in a, in a day, in any of the services, uh, we'll have support workers plus the team leader, the, the team manager, but also we do have some clinicians who are nurse, social worker, and occupational services. So they do help into their daily plan, how that will look like. If somebody needs to go to work, how that will look like, how we will be able to support. That means somebody needs to be ready by 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning. So how much that means the support. So it's like, it's not medically based. I will say it's just living their own life. Um, and it's like, yeah, and I think we, it, we do. You know, sometimes we, if a client is in my service, living in, independently in the community, but things are falling over, 
and you know the clinicians feel like maybe they need a bit of extra the wraparound support they may go into one of the cedar services and actually live with staff and you know <coughs> yeah. get, get that a bit of extra support gets yeah, in right like regular regular yeah, time sorry, sorry like regularly give, taking the medication why quite often it happens that people living their own not looking after their own personal hygiene and things so they're falling off not eating on time not having enough you know not taking their medication if they are under any meds or anything so and then they will come and they say we need that support if it's possible and and so then we will be actually yes if, so our clinician then do the assessment and they look at yes if we can if we are the best first if we are the right person to provide that support then we will take it and we will take that support in. so that's sort of i do so mine is from mental health dhd to ssd i have got usually five um of funders that are funding um, so you still have a place in Hamilton. Um, is there part of your services? Do they work with habit? Um, I, I not because I am not in. As I said, I'm not in Waikato. So do you do you think you have got anyone working with habit? I don't think so. No. Yes. Okay. Well, they tried to put me on something like this there, but they never really did. So. Um, cool. Carol. Okay. Yeah, the Pina services. Yeah, not a residential service. No, no, not residential, no. but community. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we looking for somewhere to a residential service, or? Um, at the moment, I'm just healing, so not at the moment. No. But I'm just giving them information. I've just had a couple of surgeries. So okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just getting information at this point on. So, is, are you living in a habit? Is habit got residential? Um, no, I got put onto them just last year before Christmas. Yeah. And the guy just tried to push me into things I didn't even want to do. Mm. So, I ended up just trying to say goodbye, but because my head injury, I told the young people to, yeah. to get lost. But, you know, I tell it like it is when I'm not around. Are you feeling like you need some support now, or are you? Um, I'm quite, I'm quite happy. I'm just, I'm just healing at the moment. Yeah. Getting, I've just had two surgeries, so yeah. I'm just healing and I'm just getting the information and then see where to from there. Yeah. And I decide, I guess. So, have it do a living my life contract as well? Yeah. 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 So yeah. we, yeah, we we are I'm two separate providers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, to see in the future, you've got our information. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, I always feel that um, people should have the choice yeah. where they want to, who they want to work with. You know, maybe some for some people, maybe we are the right provider. For some people, we are not. And it's like we're all working with people. So I don't think there's anything wrong in it. And I think it's really good to be, you know. Uh, having an uh, open conversation and like you, know, you might do somebody else. That doesn't mean I am bad. It just means it actually fits the purpose. It's no, it's just, yeah, they weren't listening to my needs and yeah. all they just they wanted. A, a lot of our clients have other providers provide like yes. the, um, mm-hmm. health and um, health 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 New Zealand, yeah. and like yeah. a whole lot. I mean, I have got clients, like I have got people who live in my service. They go and work with Geneva. They might go and work with somebody else. That's fine. We work together. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Good information. Right. I'll show you some of the good. things that we do in our service. And um, so I think this one was. This is Anzac Day. It is the, this Anzac Day. Yeah. They did the made the cookies and everything, and they all got dressed up and all red and. Yeah, um, this one is yours, right? Uh, yeah, so I know this client really well. Um, so I started in, uh, as a support worker for Goodwood Park years ago, and um, Willie was one of my clients, and he is still with us. Um, so he's been he walks, but he also loves his cigarettes, 
tobacco is a big thing for Willie. <laughs> and it's been a goal. Um, not so much, I guess, <laughs> Willie, he's got a significant brain injury. Um, he's also now nearly 75. And there was also a uh, possible dementia diagnosis mm. there. So there's like, you know, that dual thing happening for Willie. So the support worker and Willie just lately have been trying to do the, the stairs at the reserve in Pokotani for a few months. Now, I've done this walk with Willie before, years ago. It's steep, and he was along, I, I was behind him, and all you could hear was his breathing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so his big goal was to complete the whole track, which he did just mm. about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So now he's really trying hard to cut down on his tobacco smoking um, nice. and, and keep doing this walk. So yeah, uh, he would certainly not have done it without someone there to support and encourage him. So he's a bit of a success story. Yeah. yeah. Ben's another um, Living My Life client up in Northland and this was taken with his, yeah, his support worker. So he just wants to fish, get out there, provide some food for his family, and that's their port. Mm -hmm. And happy about it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty big one as well. Mm. Brett is also a um, Living My Life client up in Northland, and he has a mobility scooter and wanted some support to help build like a shelter. For it, then you can charge it overnight, and that's that's what's happening there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's tailor made, right? What support do you need? Yeah. The person wants, and that's the way the support worker works, um, and they provide that support. Yeah, and we do weekend support. We've got a young um, fella who is living in South Auckland, and he has a support worker come on a Saturday. To take him out, um, just to give him his, his bump a bit of a break too. I mean, to get him out and about in the community, but actually, we try and really work alongside the whanau and see what sort of work for everyone. Mm. Sorry, that's my phone. Mm -hmm. Just ignore. Mm -hmm. And Vince, yeah, again up north, <laughs> lots of fishing up north. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's his kahawai. Uh, so one of my service has got quite a number of um, Indian staff. So they decided to uh, celebrate Diwali, which gave the opportunity for our clients and everyone to dress up. And actually, they did a number. Everyone was staff, client, everyone. There was nothing, no difference. Everyone actually performed and they really performed so well and mm -hmm. unfortunately I don't have that video it was lovely the Indian and the loud manager music in yes and our general manager she they all dressed her up as in with an Indian costume so it was beautiful it was really really good and um so during the COVID time we really needed to think how and what we are going to do because it was as you can imagine, it was really hard for us not seeing your family, friends, you know, parents and things like that. So the same goes, um, the people who were in the residential services, we really had to put so much of, I mean, I'll not say, that, I mean, boundaries that, you know, you can't do this or not. And we were doing like pack and save shopping. It was like all online, go and pick it up rather than actually people going and checking. So, you know, all those kind of things we had to put. At that time, we did quite a lot of in-house sort of a thing in the house. So we did pizza competition. It was really every week they were doing it once a week. They will have pizza. They will decide what kind of pizza. They will look at the menu and people were. It was a huge success because all the houses got involved in and everyone wants to beat the next, next person <laughs> and next person. So it was really, really good. Um, we do celebrate a lot of things, I will say. <laughs> Everything in, in sun, we will do that. 
Um, we during the COVID time again uh, because we couldn't go out in the parks and things like that. So in our residential service, this is in Kumiu. I've got a huge van there as well. The next year, so we did a cricket competition, um, and actually staff lost. The client won, <laughs> so it was a cricket competition we had. Um, yeah. Um, and this is another service which is in Kelston. People have got people can bring their own pets, and only if the other flatmates are happy. And also, you know, like uh, bringing cats or the, the vet bill and everything needs to make sure they're vaccinated, they've got everything. So again, making sure everything is there and we don't have a problem. So they look after their own pet and the pet food and vet um, and all of those. Um, also, um, uh, it's from SPCA. Sometimes the dogs come and visit for some of our clients and that's more to do with their pet. Um, again, during COVID time, we had baking competition, we had a huge art competition that was really, really successful. Um, and they're running another one now. Hi, yeah. So now we have done yeah. organizationally once a year, we are going to do an art competition. So I, I delivered some community <laughs> art. There's last a, week. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. People are really getting into it. I think COVID has. Um, that's something we never expected that will happen in New Zealand and that did happen and we survived but that also we have learned quite a bit you know and also we improved um, doing things differently we never thought that online we will do therapy sessions so some of our clients are getting support from the behavior mm -hmm. support to, during the COVID time through Zoom so that was great they because they couldn't come in. Oh. <laughs> so during the COVID time again, the mask mask shortage and everything. So we had enough supply, but um, we had two three people actually made huge amount of masks, um, and they they started selling it. <laughs> it was really really good one. Um, we had a just recently. Uh, it's not up here, but um, in the bay, just be, before Christmas, we we're trying to do like a Christmas get together with the clients. All our clients oh, yes, from that's right. Hamilton, uh, really just the bay in Hamilton, Otani. So didn't happen prior to Christmas. Just everyone, you know, just everyone was too busy to get in, you know, to find the date. So we decided to do it. So it was in March, and we all met at Pilot Bay. So the staff who are based in Hamilton brought their clients over. Staff from Pakistani brought their So there was about <coughs> 25 clients, I guess, and the staff, and we all met at Pilot Bay. The clients brought food to share, or, or and we just hung out at the beach, had a, had a swim. Those that wanted to swim um, played some games. Our cultural advisor came and everyone in the haka and there were some ladies just having a walk and then we were all singing they they decided then to join us so <laughs> they were part of the, the whole thing but it was really successful it was lovely yeah. and all the clients want to do it again sometime it's a good way to socialize hmm. yeah i think that brings to end um yeah are you trying to get a stimulus 